Hi everyone. In this video, we will see about the challenges of a wireless sensor network by learning about the characteristic requirements of wireless sensor networks and the required mechanisms of a wireless sensor network. So let's get, it, get into the video. So a wireless sensor network has to handle a wide range of application types. So using one single realization of a wireless sensor network or using one single implementation of wireless sensor network, we cannot handle everything. But there are certain common traits for all types of applications with respect to the characteristics and the required mechanisms. So we are going to learn that characteristics and the required mechanisms, which are common across all types of WSN for all application types. So the main challenge is realizing these characteristics of WSNs with the new mechanisms is the main challenge for the vision of the wireless sensor networks. So the main characteristics which are common among most of the wireless sensor network applications are type of service, quality of service, fault tolerance, lifetime, scalability, programmability, and maintainability. So let's learn about each of these characteristics of wireless sensor networks. First one is type of service. So if you take a conventional communication network, it moves the bits from one place to another. But for a wireless sensor network, it has to provide, it has to just not move the bits from one sender to the receiver, but it has to provide meaningful information about a given task. It has to provide actions about a given task. Uh, additionally, it also has concepts like it has to scope the interactions to a specific geographic regions or to specific time intervals. That means that uh, if uh, it is a localized sensor or if it is a time related sensor, then the interactions has to be scoped to the specific geographic regions or to the specific time intervals. So scoping of interactions to specific geographic regions or time related intervals is important. And the other thing is, so for using wireless sensor networks, we need to make use of new paradigms, new interfaces and new ways of thinking about the network service. Next is the quality of service. So for a wireless sensor network, generally typical quality of service requirements is bounded delay or minimum bandwidth, but here it is irrelevant it's because most of the wireless sensor network applications, uh, they have a tolerance to latency. And uh, for many applications, the bandwidth of the transmitted data is very small. So here the quality of service requirements are sometimes for some applications, occasional delivery of a packet is sufficient. In some other applications, high reliability requirements are required. In some other applications, delay is important because the actuators have to be controlled in a real-time fashion by the sensor network. So that is the requirement for WSN for as far as the quality of service characteristic is concerned. The next one is fault tolerance. So fault tolerance means that in a wireless sensor network, many nodes may run out of energy many nodes might be damaged. And uh, the wireless communication between two nodes may be permanently interrupted. So in all these cases, the WSN should be able, should be tolerant to such faults. So if it has to be tolerant to node failure, redundant deployment of the nodes is necessary. So that is the characteristic of fault tolerance. The next characteristic is lifetime. So lifetime is nothing but the time. So in a wireless sensor network, the time until the first node fails or the time until the first node runs out of energy is called as the network lifetime. So the nodes have to, commonly what happens in a WSN is nodes will have to run on a limited supply of energy using batteries because they are making use of batteries. So replacing whenever they run out of energy, replacing these energy sources is usually not practicable. So uh, a wireless sensor network should always be able to operate at least for a given mission time. It should be able to operate for a given mission time or as long as possible. So, uh, so if it should be able to operate for a given mission time, we need an energy efficient way of operation of the wireless sensor network. The next characteristic is scalability. So there might be a large number of nodes in a wireless sensor network. So the architectures and the protocols which are employed should be able to scale to these number of nodes. The next characteristic is wide range of densities. So density is nothing but the number of nodes per unit area. The number of nodes per unit area is called as the density of a wireless sensor network. So if you consider different WSN applications, they will have different node densities. Even within a given application, 
nodes will fail or nodes might move. So the density will vary over space and time. And similarly, within an entire network also, the density need not have to be homogeneous because there might be imperfect deployment. So density may not be homogeneous within an entire network. Density may not be the same uh, within a given application. So, but the network should be able to adapt to such variations. That is a characteristic of wide range of densities. The next characteristic is programmability. Programmability means, uh, so we will be programming the nodes to process the information. So there will be a change in their tasks. So nodes should react flexibly whenever there is a change in their tasks. So nodes should be programmable. And once we program, programming should be changeable during operation whenever new tasks arrive. So we cannot have a fixed way of information processing. So this is called as programmability. The next characteristic is maintainability. So a WSN environment may change or the WSN itself might change. The reason is, the batteries might get depleted, the nodes may fail, new tasks might arrive. So system has to adopt all these changes. System has to adopt to depleted batteries, node failures, and the arrival of new tasks. So for this, the WSN has to maintain itself. It has to monitor its own health, monitor its own status. It has to change the operational parameters whenever required. It has to choose between different trade-offs whenever required. For example, whenever the energy is scarce, it should be able to ready to provide low quality. And require if required, it should be able to interact with external maintenance mechanisms to provide extended operation at the required quality. The next characteristic, the next we will move on to required mechanisms for a wireless sensor network. So the mechanisms which are typical of wireless sensor networks are listed here. The mechanisms are multi-hop wireless communication, energy efficient operation, auto configuration, collaboration and in-network processing, data centric, locality of reference and exploiting the trade-offs. So let's learn about each of these mechanisms. First one is multi-hop wireless communication. So actually, uh, we, uh, uh, we before learning about the actual mechanisms, uh, we saw about the characteristic requirements of uh, WSN. So to meet those requirements, we need Innovative mechanisms, new architectures, and new protocol concepts has to be found suitable to the WSM. But the challenge here is we, need, we have to find mechanisms in such a way that that will suit specific to the idiosyncrasies, idiosyncrasies of a given application. That is for any given application might have a specific QoS requirement, specific lifetime requirement, specific maintainability requirements. So whatever mechanisms we find out, those innovative mechanisms should be sufficient for the specific application type. So the first mechanism for a wireless sensor network is multi-hop wireless communication. So uh, multi-hop wireless communication is uh, for if a direct communication has to take place between a sender and the receiver, the, it has a lot of limitations. So whenever the, there is a requirement for communication over long distances, it needs prohibitively high transmission power. So we need intermediate nodes as relays. So then only the total required power will get reduced. So this is called as multi-hop communication. Multi-hop communication means for communication over long distances, we use multi-hop, we use intermediate nodes as relay nodes. That is called multi-hop communication. That is important ingredient for wireless sensor network. The second mechanism is energy efficient operation. So energy has to be utilized efficiently because wireless sensor nodes has to support long lifetimes, which means we need energy efficient operation. So for energy efficient, so for the options which we have for energy efficient operation is energy efficient data transport between the two nodes or energy efficient ways of determination of requested information. So data transport mechanism has to be energy efficient or the we need energy efficient determination of the requested uh, information. Also, whenever there is non-homogeneous energy consumption in the in the guise of formation of hotspots, that is also an issue. The next mechanism is auto configuration. So wireless sensor network should be able to configure its operational parameters autonomously. So independent of whatever is the external configuration, a wireless sensor network should configure its parameters autonomously. Because there is a complicated, complex number of nodes and huge number of nodes and there is a simplified de deployment. So that's why 
uh, we have this requirement for WSN, they should be able to configure their operational parameters. For example, depending on the position of other nodes in the network, they should be able to determine their geographical positions. This is called self-location. And they should be able to tolerate the failing nodes. They should be able to integrate new nodes whenever there is an incremental deployment after failure. This is called as auto configuration. So in auto configuration, we have ability to determine their geographical positions based on the position of other nodes in the network, ability to tolerate failing nodes and ability to integrate new nodes comes under auto configuration. The next mechanism is collaboration and in-network processing. So in some applications, uh, uh, the data coming from a single sensor is not sufficient to detect an event. We need the joint data of many sensors to provide enough information. So in this case, what happens is the information is processed in the network itself in order to achieve this collaboration. For example, if you have to find the highest temperature in an area or the average temperature within an area, and we have to report that value to a sync node means, readings from an individual sensors can be aggregated before they are propagated through the network. Because of this, the amount of data to be transmitted will be reduced and it improves the energy efficiency. The next mechanism is data centric. In a wireless sensor network, nodes are deployed redundantly to protect, uh, protect against node failures and to compensate for the low quality of a single node sensing equipment. Uh, so the identity of the particular node becomes irrelevant. That means we often employ redundant nodes in order to provide for node failures as well as uh, in order to provide for the low quality of data coming from a single sensing equipment. So we are not bothered about from where the data arrives. We are only bothered about the quality of the data which has arrived. So we there is a requirement for us to switch from an address-centric paradigm to a data-centric paradigm while designing the protocols and uh, architecture for a wireless sensor network. And um, next is locality. Principle of locality has to be employed in a wireless sensor network to ensure scalability. Principle of locality means that if a node has limited resources, like limited memory resources, it is sufficient that it should only accumulate information about its neighbors during protocol processing, about its direct neighbors. So this will allow the network to scale to large number of nodes without relying on powerful processing at each single node. So if a network performs a locality, follows the principle of locality, then this will allow the network to scale large number of nodes. So we have to combine the locality principle with efficient protocol designs. Next is exploiting the trade-offs. Uh, so wireless sensor networks uh, has to, they have to e exploit various trade-offs between mutually contradictory goals during protocol design and during runtime. So there, there will be various trade-offs during the design of protocol design of the architecture and during runtime also. They should be able to exploit these trade-offs. Some of the examples of trade-offs are a trade-off between high energy expenditure allows high result accuracy. Whenever there is a high energy expenditure, it results in high result accuracy. Uh, whether a trade-off between whether longer lifetime of the entire network or longer lifetime of the individual nodes. Or another trade-off is node density. So depending on the de application, depending on the deployment, and depending on the node failures during runtime, the density of the network will vary. The protocols will have to handle the different situations at different places of a single network. So the node density will vary during runtime and the protocol should be able to handle different node densities at different places of a single network. So we have to, these are all the different mechanisms of a wireless sensor network and we have to harness them in such a way that they are easy to use as well as general. So such that for an application programmer, he should be, able to feel that it is easy to use as well as general and that, that is a major up application challenge for the wireless sensor networks. So that is all about the characteristic requirements and the challenges and the mechanisms of a wireless sensor network. For more such videos on wireless sensor network, do like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.